as the father, I was just like, yeah, I want to be with my daughter because my father, he was there, but he wasn't present. So I just know how that feel when a father's not present. So I just wanted to make sure she felt my presence. Now you said tit for tat. So was it you guys taking petty reactions to each other? Constantly arguing. Um, I know I, I wasn't the best with my emotions. You know, I don't think any man or boy is at 21 years old, especially becoming a new new father. Just the state in mind that we both were at, we were both so young and uh, just young and dumb. Tariq, I'm, I'm, I'm applauding you, right? Because this is brave of you, right? <laughs> to come with two old fogies like us and allow us to challenge you and ask you these sort of questions, right? So I'm, I'm applauding you. This is brave of you. Single dad, why you mad? Single dad, why you mad? Single dad, why are you mad? Single dad, why 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 you mad? Tariq, how are yes. you? I'm good, you? I'm feeling okay. Clark, how you feeling? I'm good, man, I'm good. Okay, Absolutely. Um, before we get started, um, Tariq, uh, one of the first things we always do, obviously, is uh, welcome everybody back to another episode of Single Dad, How You Mad? We have a guest with us today. I've got a couple of uh, questions that I would love to ask. But before we get to that, Clark, there was two things that I sent over to you I wanted to hear your opinion on. The first, Erica Mena yep. responds to blowback after Safari asked courts to let him be there for child's birth. She didn't say anything up front right away, but the word on the street was, is that she did not want him at the hospital when the child was gonna be born. And uh, right. they're married, they're husband and wife now, but they are estranged, they're separated, they're about to be divorced, and they already have one child together. Clark, I wanted to hear what you thought about that. You know, it, so it, it's interesting, right? Because it, it, I know sitting in, in that space, like if I had a kid on the way, I'd want to be there. And, you know, I think, you know, when you're the dad, you have a right to be there, but you also have to respect the fact that it's her body, right? It's legally and technically, it's an operation or procedure happening with her body. And so she has the option of deciding and, and the right to decide who's in the room when, when that procedure takes place. You know, I, I think it's sad that you know, people allow their personal venom, you know, whatever venom they have between the two of them that's leading them to split and leading them to be like this cantankerous. I think it's sad that you you can't get to a point where you're going, you, you know what? I don't fuck with you. I, I don't ever want to fuck with you again. But we have this kid coming, you know, arriving. And, you know, we should both be there for that for that process. I agree a whole hundred percent on that. Say it again, Tariq. I said I agree a whole hundred percent on that. To set all the difference aside, it's just for the kid. Because I've, I've been in that position been having to pick my parents and it's not it's not fun so i definitely understand that now how about how'd you shake out on this one david what was your what were your thoughts so um i listened to a couple of people argue about it right and one of the arguments somebody was given was that uh so the first person says yo man that's not right yo uh uh she has the baby and you know he's got to be 100 percent responsible financially, but he can't be there when his kid is born. That's not right, right? And, um, you know, that just sounded a little uh, prehistoric to me um, because everybody's responsible financially, even though you got to fight for that sometimes, you know, in the courts or, you know, on the streets or whatever it is. But yes, it is her body. And until the baby comes out of her body, she has all rights. There's nothing you can say. You sit outside. Like, like to be there means what? That you want to be in the operating room? You don't need to be there in the operating room. You could be outside by the vending machine. And when they say the baby's born, they, they, they bring the baby out for a second. You get to say hello and pray and kiss. And then the baby can go back inside. And when she gets out of the hospital, you make, you know, whatever arrangements you have so that you get visitation or whatever else it is and so on. But I don't think, you know, he has any right to be there. And it's all about, you know, making sure that it's a stress-free environment. And if she believes that he's going to bring stress to the environment, then he's got to take a back seat to it. Right. You know, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. It's, it's, it's 
forget the law, forget anything else, just the physicality of it. Well, like, I mean, it, it, and that, that, that ties, like, when you talk about just the street physicality of it, right? Like, it, 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 it also ties to that, you know, one of the ma major grievances you'll hear from dudes and one of the major gripes that, like, gets men in trouble is, like, I have no say, I have no choice. And re real talk, like, you don't, <laughs> you know, like, you don't, like, this, I, I, I am hard pressed to think of a judge that would grant him or, 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 or grant him forced access into the, the, the delivery room. Exactly. Now, now, can can she have him banned from the hospital premises? Now, if there's a safety concern, that's a different story too. But if it's just, you know, I don't want him there, you know, she can ban him from the delivery room, but I don't think she could have him banned from the hospital premises. Exactly. And if he's trying to get into the delivery room, I think that's a little childish. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk to you about real quick, what does 8,000 pennies equal? How much is that? Uh, 800 bucks. 800 bucks. Yeah. What do you think about that? Guy <laughs> drops off. Guy <laughs> drops off. Dad dumps 80,000 pennies on his <laughs> strange daughter's lawn for final child support. <laughs> right. So I, I peeped that and I was just like, yo, <laughs> that that's next level petty. I saw that too, and I I, I immediately thought the same thing. I, I'm not gonna front. I laughed at it, but I was like, yo, <laughs> yo, uh, were your kids there for that? Because like, all right, I'll put it to you like this: he right? dropped it off on the daughter's lawn. It's the daughter's lawn. Well, it, 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 it's it's the it's the mom's house. The daughter lives there. They have two kids. They have two daughters who live there, right? But when you when you read a little further into the story of this dude dropping off. The, you know, these, these, uh, these 80,000 pennies, like, not only does he have a cantankerous relationship with his ex-wife, he has no relationship. Like, he does not business at all with his two daughters. So they're, like, they're looking at it, like, as an insult and an embarrassment to them and, you know, an embarrassment in the neighborhood and so forth. Like, there's no there's no spirit of jest. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it, 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 but, but it makes the child who's obviously old enough to yeah. understand what this is, feel like a burden. Like I was a burden to you all of this time. Which the, which the child obviously feels like if they have no relationship with you. Which is, which is uh, like in the articles that I read behind it, they spoke to the daughter and the daughter was like, yeah, like I, I don't have a relationship with my dad. Neither does my sister. Whatever the, the, the you know, the backstory is, to them not having that relationship, a display like that just kind of fosters whatever they're being fed about you or whatever their belief system is about you. Exactly. That's what I yeah, yeah. And it costs more energy to go get the 80,000 pennies and, 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 and do all of that than it does, you know, to just, you know, cut a normal, how much energy did that take? Right. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. It's like people, people in general will get emotional and cut off their nose to spite their face. So he has a relationship with the kids or he doesn't? He doesn't. He, he didn't, he, he, he's like, he drove, he's like, I'm sorry that it drove a further wedge between me and my daughters. It was a, paraphrasing what he said, but he did say a further wedge in All right. from what I recall. Tariq. Hi. Where do you live? I live in Maryland. Okay. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and, uh, you know, talk about, uh, who you are, where you live, how old you are, um, and, uh, uh, you know, your child, you got a boy, you got a girl, how old they are. Why don't you do that for us? Hi, my name is Tariq Newton. I'm from Maryland. I work for FedEx. Actually, sorry, I don't work for FedEx. I drive and I'm contracted to drive for FedEx. My daughter is 17 months, and current point in time, me and the mother have no business. Um, we keep gelling for, I say, a good week, and then out of nowhere, the week just, it always goes back to zero, and then we just got to build it, build it back up. But the last week, we just completely cut all ties to oh, talking wow. to each other. So, and how old are you, Tariq? I'm 22. 22, wow. Yeah, uh, I'll be sorry, I'll be 22 in about two weeks. So, oh, wow. So, so, wow. So, Very so, young. So, 21, your daughter is you know, one and a half, almost one and a half right now. Um, wow. So you got a kid at 20. Yeah. All right. You know what? I, 
I, I, I'm going to just lead off with the question, man. So you, you, you've, you've listened to the show. You know what question is coming. Yep. <laughs> like, how, how the fuck did you get here? Right? So, uh, like, wait, oh, wait. Oh. so before, so can, can I ask him a question? How does it, so were you born, what year were you born in? 1999. 1999. You are a Prince song, brother. Do you, like, <laughs> do you know that song? Like, like, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, I know yeah. a little Prince. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, so uh, you're, you're tw- at 21 years old, your father and your father with, with a difficult relationship. Uh, I, I, know, I know a lot of people have been through this, man, but I'm going to ask the question again. In, in, in your case, how the fuck did you get here? All right, the honest truth, how the fuck I got here. Um, fell in love with this girl. It it started off a little rocky and on the, the trustworthy end on both of our parts, but then it later grew, especially when she became pregnant after us being together for two and a half years. So we were t- together for two and a half years. Again, very both of us very young um, in the day and age of social media. I'm um, going to just say that kind of threw our beginning of the relationship a little off rocks because I'm not going to lie, uh, I was on social media, but I wasn't giving her my full attention. But then I baby came along and then I tried to show her that she is all my attention. And then throughout that, uh, you can pretty much just see the downward slope that we can just go f- go through to from this point. And it's just been toxic and just trying to get her to understand that I was broken and we're still broken, but it's just, I'm trying to pick all the pieces up, but you just got to understand my point of view. And I understand your point of view a whole hundred percent, but you got to kind of meet me in the middle, but we're still a young minded. So, yeah. So, so how, how you guys were together for how long? Two years. We met Two at years. Chick-fil-A. Y'all better just like walking in the Chick-fil-A. She had uh, we were co-workers. Uh, oh. I had a, yeah, so I had a crush on her. Uh, came up to her, talking to her, you know, spin my game back in the old, old day. Got her to um, come home with me one day. We were just kicking it. We was vibing. Um, showed her my old movie collections. And I guess that was the point when she fell in love with me and because that's when she knew that I like all horror movies. So we met at Chick-fil-A. We just been kicking it for two years. Um, and again, uh, in the beginning of the relationship, which is very, very shady. And it, it just caught up with it because of the baby. Let's, let's so, say that. so was it an actual relationship where y'all like boyfriend or girlfriend or y'all were just like coworkers and kicking it a little bit? It's, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We were fully right. committed. So, so fully committed, officially together. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to ask the elephant in the room. Wait, were you doing something that made her feel insecure? Like, Definitely. were you cheating? Were you, you hollering at other girls? Yeah. Definitely, I was. I was talking to other girls um, on Tinder. Yeah, yeah, but I can honestly say that was a, a fault on my part. But I constantly tried to show her. After that, I, I'll be honest, I degraded my my viral my values and my morals and my beliefs just to try to show her. Um, that I, I'm all for this family, especially when the baby came here. Um, gave her access to my my all my social media accounts, almost every account you can think of besides my bank account because I, I just couldn't do that at that point. Yeah. Um, because we were too young and I just, we're not married. So that, that was just kind of pushing it. But yeah, I'm just trying to show her a lot of these, these, signs that I am for her and while I'm living with her family dealing with that that dilemma and that diversity so we that just further drift us as a part as a couple oh so you you were you were living with her and her family after the baby was born yeah about eight months give or take it was a little less than a year oh so so you were there for about eight months and then so you're out so you're no, no longer living with them yeah, and that actually started a very rocky cycle after I moved too, because after I moved and I, it was another cycle of me just trying to find a comfortable home. Yeah. So with that in the back of my mind, that also pushed us further because just me trying to get closer to her, but I'm I'm getting further physically and 
then it, it turned out in the beginning of this year, we just couldn't just keep up with the, the constant tit for tat. So we just finally cut all ties and just said that we're just going to be co-parents. And then two days prior to that, an incident happened that she has done on her part. And so that further drove a wedge to us. So it's just been a lot of wedging and a lot of pushback from, from both of us. Right. And you said tit for tat. So was it you guys doing taking petty reactions to each other or were yeah. you just arguing? Like Constantly arguing. Um, I'm going to be honest. Um, I, know I, I wasn't the best with my emotions. You know, I don't think any man or boy is at 21 years old, especially becoming a new new father. I want to say that she was suffering from, um, what's the? Postpartum. Postpartum. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to really say that because you're not in that position to really do that. But I can definitely tell her emotions were different. It was just a lot of pettiness thrown my way. And there was a lot of pettiness thrown her way. And it did not help with the fam me living with, with her and her family. Cause now, when you say living with her and her family, who does that exactly? <sighs> her family consists. I like of, the deep breath. I like the deep breath. That means we're getting real here. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, the family consists of a, I guess, a small four bedroom house. This was in the very beginning. Four bedroom, um, two story house. But I mean, who was living in the house with y'all? It was her sister. She had a big family, and then that's something else that I wasn't used to. Her her oldest sister, then it was another um, younger sister, and then an, um, another sister and her boyfriend, her mom and her dad, three chihuahuas. I eventually brought my, it, I don't talk to my dad, but I brought my dad's dog over, and that dog is now still living currently at that house when I moved in with them. So now they have like multiple dogs. So it's just a it's just a very busy. So house. her mom, her dad, um, her three, three sisters. sisters, and one sister had her boyfriend living there also. Yeah. Okay. And forget about you know the size of the house. Uh, obviously, uh, if mom and dad already allowed uh, the sister to have one boyfriend there, it wasn't a big deal you know to have you there also. Um, how long had the other sister had her boyfriend there? Did you know? He, what he still lives there. But how about how long have you been living there? Oh, um, probably with within now two, two and a half years. So they've been there for a while? Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what was the situation that came that you needed to go? Did you need to go live with them or did you just choose to go live with them? Um, as the father, I was just like, yeah, I want to be with my daughter because my, my father he was there, but he wasn't present. So I just know how that feel when a father's not present. So I just wanted to make sure she felt my presence and per se. And so why not have her come live with you though, I guess is what I was trying to get to. Uh, Wherever it was that you were staying at the time, why not have her come live with you? I really didn't bring it up with my mom. I was living with my mom. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you were living with your mom. You were living, yeah. yeah, I was living with my mom and she was in the, the process of getting married falling in love so I, I I just didn't I couldn't bring myself to really ask her so okay I, and how did your mom feel about you going to live with her um I don't know her honest opinion to this day but I know she definitely respected my decision to to try to fight through and live with that them despite live with them because you were going to live with your daughter and daughter, take care right. of yeah okay all right um you said uh, well, that, uh, Go ahead, how did you, no, I was going to ask, how, how did your mom feel about you having a kid at, tw at, at 21? Oh. Uh, you know, of course she was 20. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Of course she was devastated when I first told her. Um, I don't think any black mother is not going to be devastated to hear that her 20 year old is having a, uh, my daughter. Um, she was definitely devastated, but as soon as it was official and it was like set in stone, she started coming around. She, um, I don't think she showed any resentment or any any anger towards me personally or to Vicky, uh, which is her the mother's name. How old is Vicky? She is twenty two too. She y'all the same age, just about the same age. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, where does she live? Like, how far away does she live? Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay. 
And, okay. and, and you said in the beginning, y'all fell in love, right? I love to hear that shit, you know? Um, uh, because when I look back now on uh, what I felt like was love then, I say to myself, okay, was that really love? You know, like, like you know, I, so I'm asking you that same question now. If you look back on it now, does it still feel like that was love to you? Like you guys had fallen in love? Yes, back then, yeah. But as I'm thinking more and more, I, it's kind of hard to really, I guess, say other than us finding adventures and stuff, it's kind of hard to find good memories, per se, because just the state in mind that we both were at, we were both so young and uh, just young and dumb. Um, I just I just can't remember that much about it, but I definitely would say yes. So you're saying you remember the the, the bad times more than you remember the good times right now? Yes. That's what I think. That's what it's, I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, no, you're you're definitely you're definitely right. I don't I don't know if it's just because of everything's just still raw. Uh huh. And but yeah, I can just only remember the bad times right now currently. Okay. And, 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 and you know, I'll I'll even go a step further and say you. Know, I don't know what the, the nature of your relationship is like day to day, but that's also a function of you going through it. When, when you going through it, <laughs> right? Like the, the bad stuff is first and foremost in your mind. And that's the stuff that comes up, you know, as soon as you think about that person, uh, particularly when you go through it. Um, so, yeah. Speaking of going through it, you guys have been separated now for how long? Like really separated for how long? You and, you and, you and Vicky is the name. Yeah. Um, I say about seven months, seven months officially. Seven months after, so all together, you've been to guys have been together two years and seven months, but you've been really separated for seven months now. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said something earlier, Clark, help me out with this. Maybe you understand this. I don't know. But you said to me that as an example, you didn't say it to me, you said it, and maybe I heard this wrong. You said as an example, you knowing that you guys were together and a couple and everything like that, like you had given her access to all your social media. Is that what that means when you give somebody access to all your social media? That like, I have nothing to hide. It's me and you, we all together all in. Yes, especially if, I, if, if it goes both ways. If I feel like if you are that invested into my personal life, then yes, you, you're, you're with me. Clark, so I so this is this is a, this is a young boy thing, right? Like this is like like I'm over. It, it's funny because I, I think depending how invested somebody my age and my like right now I'm 45, right? I run into women who are this invested in social media. Let's take a selfie together. You didn't post a picture of me, you know, in in how long, you know? Like I hear this from women who are my age. You know, you're a 45 year old woman and you are thoroughly invested in, in Facebook and thoroughly invested in, in IG and you're, and being able to put stuff on your Snapchat, right? So from my age downward, like you know, to be in, in the in the, 20, the 30s and then down to 20 year olds and teenagers, like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if people, generally when, they, when it, there's a demand to start swapping stuff, like, like, give me access to your phone, give me access to your passwords, there's a level of insecurity. And part of it is, I, I think, you know, a function of social media. I, I think part of it is also a function of age, right? Yeah, you know, when you're younger, you have a lot more to be insecure about. And, and you tend to worry a lot more about certain things. So I, I've, I've absolutely seen it. I've watched it. I mean, it's something that people joke about online all the time. Give me access to your phone. Give me access to your email. Give me access to your, your Snapchat. I want to see your DMs. You know, there's YouTube channels that actually do that like, as, as, as you know, a promotional thing. It's like bring two people on and have them switch phones or you know, read each other's DMs a lot or what have you. All that to say, man, yeah, I'm not doing it personally. <laughs> and that's what you guys did. You guys exchanged each other's information, Tariq, and yeah. she had your access to your DMs and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, that was um, like pre-COVID. So uh, we'll say, I won't say pre-COVID. That was like when COVID was like starting up. So I, as I would go to work, I can clearly see that she's on my, my, my information. 
And were you in hers? Were you looking at her stuff also? I may have checked. Uh, honestly, I probably checked once her incident came up when I started tr trust distrusting her. Um, distrusting her, I'll say I checked it on like three occasions. But I have learned that it's no point in just checking. It it's honestly just going to bring more hurt to either you or the next person. Tariq, I'm I'm, I'm applauding you, right? Because this is brave of you, right? <laughs> to come to come to come and, and with two old fogies like us and allow us to challenge you and ask you these sort of questions right so i'm, I'm applauding you this is brave of you and um, I, I was ready for the challenge so. and i'm pretty sure you heard me say this so i'm going to challenge uh i'm going to challenge you now all right all right okay. but before you challenge him i, I, I want to say I, I i'm proud of you for two reasons well firstly that you're owning up so far to to, to stuff and saying hey yo like i had a, i had a part in this you know, you, you, you've done a little bit of self-reflection. You know, okay, this, this, I've had a part in, in, in the dissolution of our relationship. I had a part in creating this, you know, this aura of distrust that's in our relationship. And you know what? I snoop. She gave me access. And granted, she probably gave you access with the expectation that you're going to look. But you gave into your insecurities and you snoop. And whatever you found was what you found. So, so uh, this is a two-parter, right? Okay. Um, you said that in the beginning, like, you know, you was talking to other people and seeing other people. Um, when did you actually stop seeing other people and only see her? Because we're counting two and a half, two years and seven months. But, excuse me, how much of that two years and seven months were you still chatting and talking and hitting up other people? I say in the, the earlier parts of the, the it, it, it was not for a whole year, I would say that. Um, and I would honestly say the only reason why I done that, and again, I can't remember how long it was, but it, I know it definitely wasn't in a year, but it, it immediately right after she called me, um, she caught like one text message that um, I was asleep. And I guess somebody texted me and just said, hey, and she said, who is this? And of course the young mind self, I, I lied and she did her digging and found out that I was lying. and. I but, but I want a time frame. I want to put a stamp on it. I want to put a time stamp on it. Okay. So six months in, nine months in? Give or takes, I say six. Six months in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So six months in, um, you know, uh, uh, So and, and I liken it to like this, right? Uh, couples get together and talk about, you know, how they've been married for 40 years straight. Um, but uh, the truth of the matter is, either one of them or both of them in the beginning of the marriage was fucking around for the first 20 years. So they truly have been married really, except for the last 20 years. Don't right. talk about 40 year marriage when you ain't really been in the marriage in the first place <laughs> for the first 20 years, right? But uh, you said that there were a couple of things that you have done that were petty. Give us an example of something that you did that was petty. Remember how I said that she did something that kind of further drove me away and- yeah. So literally the second day after we like officially just said, okay, we're just going to co-parent this, but we're still going to try to make things work, blah, 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 whatever. The, I had knowledge in the way, 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 way beginning of the relationship of this gentleman that she had on her phone. Turns out that they had sexual relations. And so after they, she told me that they had sexual relations, I lied and said that I had sexual relations with my ex, just just for I guess a get back. And I it I know that further drove us away because that was a complete lie, and I don't know why I was needed to be that petty and that hurt at that moment. As I look back on it, I I don't know if I thought that she was just saying it to hurt me, because like the way she said it, but. I now know that she wasn't really trying to hurt me. She was just trying to, I don't know if it was just to inform me, just to let me know, like, that she's moved I am on. Sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm moving on. Or it's just, it's just a lot of mixed signals, especially with that, that one. So that's why I was saying that that drove us a further wedge because I still didn't get really clarification of why that happened. So you guys are young. You were young and like I've joked about it on this show about like being young and why like certain things aren't allowed for people at certain ages, right? Like, yo, your insurance premiums are, are through the roof 
until you're 25 as a man because you're a dumbass, right? And I, I don't mean that as an insult. I mean it like yo, it's the own fact. You, you 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 are chock full of hormones. Your your decision making, you know, portion of your brain isn't fully sucks. developed. Sucks. <laughs> decision making sucks. Go ahead. Yeah, this is, mine's did. I'm, I know mine's did. I'm I'm still not a fan of it. I'm still not a fan of it. I do it because you know it, it feeds me. But like, damn, like, oh, I gotta think about this shit. <laughs> so you got that on your end. On her end, probably very similar stuff. You know, she's she's young, she's emotional, and then you also got to think about what did you guys see. And we didn't even really talk about that. Like you alluded to some of the stuff, right? But your your mom and your dad weren't together, right? They were together until I would say ten. 10. Okay. Eleven. And so, were they married, or they just lived together? Or was... They were married, but they had a very, very um, gruesome divorce and separation period, and I was in it the whole whole way. So, your parents, you know, messy divorce when you're ten. What was your relationship like with your dad? Because it sounds like you guys aren't talking now, but like historically, what's it been like? It's I was naive because I was young but as I started to realize a lot when I get older and get older um, my dad really wasn't there a lot in the times that I really needed him to be there um, and when my daughter was on the way here um, instead of really checking up on me and he still doesn't really check up on me uh, he was kind of pressing me out for money. So after that, I cut him off until my daughter became like one. And then I started introducing him to slowly into my daughter. But uh, when you say my, pressing you up for money, what do you mean pressing you up for money? Um, I wasn't living with him at the time. And um, I wasn't living with him for actually two years at that time. But I, I had a, a phone a phone by him on, on his plan, but he never asked me for like a phone, like payment or anything. He always just said, it's okay. Like, so he was asking you to contribute toward the, your cost on the family plan. Yeah. So, so you said like, he didn't ask you, but you share the information with him. Um, I, I did. I told him that I was in between jobs and I told him several times that I, um, I say, I wouldn't say several times. I told him, uh, a time that I, I wasn't able to pay and, and if he needs to just cut the phone off. And how about with your mom? What was the relationship like with your mom? My mom's relationship started growing, um, especially after high school. Cause that's when I started um, like getting to know my mom and like understanding like what happened between my mom and my dad. So you lived primarily with your dad growing up. Like once they got divorced, you were with your dad. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like you had a rocky relationship with your dad, and I feel for you here, right? Um, what was your dad's relationship with his dad? I don't think he knew his dad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about your mom's relationship with uh, her parents? Um, the, it grew. Their their relationship grew when she moved out of their house at, I believe, twenty. But okay. other than that, they were not trying to. I love my grandparents to death, but they were. Um, serious drug addicts. So, okay. um, and your dad with his mom, um, she spoiled him, so he got whatever he want. Okay, all right. Um, so, so, so it tough. Clark. It sounds real tough. I mean, it, it sounds like really tough stuff. And the interesting thing is that you know something something we got to address, especially with you know the nature of our show. Your dad was your primary caregiver. For, for those years after the divorce. So, and it sounds sort of like what? You, you were there from the time you were, you know, 10 when they split up until sometime in high school? Was, sorry, for the divorce, like that prior for the divorce, yeah. I would say until I got to middle school, I will live one year with my dad, one year with my mom. Oh, one so year. one year, one year yeah. on, one year off, yeah. okay. Okay. And then when I moved, when, when, I became, when I became a middle schooler, that's when I was, more with my dad yeah but then um it came to high school and then that's when i just became like lived with my mom okay all right but my dad still i still had a, a place of residency at my dad's house because that was where school was 
So yeah. I had to go back there for school, but most of the time I, I didn't like being there because it just was uncomfortable. And it was just you and him in the house or? No, nah, that's when I was saying that he was trying to get a family unit started with somebody else. Okay, so he uh, so at some point while you were living there, he, he moved in a girlfriend or, or a new mm-hmm. wife, I guess? Girlfriend, uh, their kids, and had step siblings with them. Okay, and is he still in a relationship with them, or just had a just had a son by her, and that was it. Oh wow! So so you have a brother from from that. I mean, I also have three sisters too, so it's it's a. So so I mean, there's there's a lot with the family dynamic stuff going. Right? Yeah, there's a lot a... a lot with the family dynamic stuff. It's a lot with you watching your dad's style of relating to women. And your mom's relationships with, with men is your mom. Your mom is remarried now. Yeah. All right. Happy. Um, I, I I love to see her her as happy as she is now because I can definitely tell that it's a difference compared to the previous years. So I'm happy for her. She's find the I guess found the the perfect man for her or somewhat perfect man for her. And who do you stay with now? Um, and that's where this couple of months and I guess this COVID year has kind of been messing with me because after I got kicked out of her, her house because of just nonsense, um, I moved in with my mom's old roommate and then he kicked me out because of some nonsense. So now I am living um, in the basement of a friend's house. And through all of this, you're maintaining a relationship with your daughter. Yes. And that's what I meant, you know, part of what I meant when I was saying that, you know, this is pretty brave and this is pretty strong of you. In my position and how my daughters talk, I mean, not my daughter, sorry. My sisters talk about my father. I just, I want to be the complete opposite. So that, that, that's important. The, the one thing that I'm hearing, though, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm no longer welcome in that house or that, that relationship is all because of some nonsense. I'm no longer welcome in, in that spot because of some nonsense. This situation fell apart because of some nonsense. But the one recurring variable in, in all those situations is you. Right? Yeah. So it's because it sounds to me like you, you're... You, you know, taking stock that you're a young man, you're, you're starting to do the reflection. You're starting to go, yeah, okay. How am I contributing to these situations? So that's what I'm, I'm about to ask you. You know, you had to live in a situation with your ex and her family. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you feel like you contributed to what led to you being unwelcome in that house? Yes. And with with your mother's former roommate, do you think that you were a contributing factor to why that situation broke down? I want to say I tried my hardest not to get kicked out of that house because I knew the situation that I was in. But I think what happened was the gentleman that I lived in that house, he was having a baby. All right. So he had some other stuff going on, too, and he probably needed the space. Maybe, maybe sort of, but he kind of lied and tried to push me out and try to I say we didn't have a formal lease, but he tried to lie and make me seem like I, I broke our lease and which I, I definitely know that I didn't. But, but I think what Clark is asking, Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, is was it a money issue? Oh, or was it a personality issue? Well, I, I'm asking more about a personality issue. Like, yeah. is, it, is, it, is it a behavioral thing that you're exhibiting, you know, that's causing you to have this discomfort with people? It could be that, you know, you get off of here and you're, you're a complete monster, right? I don't get that vibe from you. Uh, and I want to show you and say, I don't get that vibe. Me neither. Me neither. Right? But when you are in a situation where nobody fuck with you, sometimes you got to stop and go, you know, why is nobody fuck with me? So it wasn't a financial situation. At, at the girlfriend's house. It was a personality thing. You guys weren't clicking or whatever else it is. Or you weren't clicking with her parents. And more, more or less, I wasn't clicking with her parents. Or I, I think her parents' percep- perception on me was false. I may, uh, I don't want to just 
put it all on them. Yeah, but we're not looking for the explanation. It was yeah. you weren't clicking with the parents, so yeah, that yeah, yeah. And you weren't clicking. Not it wasn't about dollars. You weren't clicking with uh, the roommate. Um, so you know they found a reason to 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 go your separate ways, right? I guess uh, so. Yeah. And, and Clark, I got to be honest, man. Um, I don't you know always you know see that as the fault of the person who has to keep doing the moving around because a lot of times you go and live with somebody else and they want you to do backflips or whatever else it is and then keep quiet about those backflips and then in the time you don't want to do a goddamn backflip they're like well this is my house man you're supposed to do backflips whenever oh. I ask you to do backflips and if you don't want to do backflips you can do backflips or you cannot do backflips on the street don't get me wrong because I'm not necessarily pointing at him and going yo it's your fault but I'm saying yo look at the numbers Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Look at the numbers and think about it. And that's right? it. And, and, that's and, and, and I think and that's what I'm saying. I, I think but there are people who can do backflips in some oh. place and just be all right with it. He might just not be the type of person that can do backflips. Right. Or, 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 or it could completely be that you have, through your lot in life and through fate, have just been surrounded by assholes. That happens. Well, that I'm, actually, I'm, not, I'm not saying that either, though. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not saying that either. Um, I, we, we got to cut to a couple of things before we start to run long. So what is the visitation like now? What is the custody like now? Who is the child with who, or, on whatever day it is? Despite all of this, I tried to make sure that we, I make sure that we don't go into the court system because I also have learned through personal experience that's not healthy for the kid. And I also hear you guys talk about it a lot and I don't ever want to put my, my child through that. But um, at first, the schedule was a little rocky because um, she doesn't work and she she hasn't worked for a minute. So she always had the baby and I always had to work. So when I was on the constant move, my schedule with her would be two, sorry, not on the move. When I was originally living with the first uh, roommate, my schedule was Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then I we would rotate uh, Monday. And when you say now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, meaning she was overnight with you on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays? Yes. Okay. Um, but now since it's kind of it's just been very hectic, and now I'm finally living at this space, and I had to tidy the space up from from the this I won't say disgrace, but the what's the proper word? It's just you want to make it. Through? Yeah, make it livable for myself and her, for yeah. her to come over here. Um, it took a while for me to finally get comfortable for her to come over here. I say about two weeks, but within those two weeks, I still was having her over my mom and my um, grandmother's house. Uh -huh. she was still, I was spending the night with her over there. So yeah. that was Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So okay. now we just have that schedule now. Um, until another switch in my work schedule for FedEx. And now I'm off Monday, Tuesday. So now I have her Sunday, Monday, and uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Overnight. So, so, yes, overnight. All right, so, so you're, you're, you're active in, 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 in stewarding and raising your daughter. Of course. Without any, any of my influence, I can't have my child in this world. I said it a hundred times. I don't trust nobody to raise my kid all by themselves. <laughs> Fuck that. Listen, I, I'm like, I, I, I commend you for that. I do too. I commend you for that. Um, so, what about dollars? Who's paying for what? Um, the state pays for her insurance. I'm trying to reason and talk to her mom because she doesn't work. I'm trying to get her to at least you calm down. Yourself, you mean your daughter's mom doesn't work, right? No. Okay. So why are you talking to her mom about it though? Because she has the birth certificate information that I'm trying oh, to get. Okay, hold on now. Let me just be clear. When you say you're talking to her mom, you're talking to your daughter's mom, not your daughter's mom's mom. Yeah, no, no, not the daughter's no. mom. Oh, no. daughter's mom. Yeah, the daughter's, uh, yeah sorry, the, my, my daughter's mother. So just, she has the birth certificate. Why don't you get a copy of the birth certificate? Because when I, I, I didn't have a t chance to make a copy before I left the house. and So, I, so, I, so let's, the, the, you're going right exactly where I want to go. When she gave birth, where were you? I was in the room. You were in the room. Mm -hmm. You saw your daughter come into this world. Yes, amazing. Um, who filled out the birth certificate paperwork? I did. You put your name right on it? 
Find that bad boy. Who's, whose last name does your daughter have? My name. You are a bad motherfucker. I appreciate you. <laughs> That's exactly the way you fucking do it. If they're going to take, if listen, fuck that. You ain't catching me out here and the, and I'm paying for everything. The kid running around with somebody else's last name. <laughs> fuck that, right? So, so that was the moment though, where you could have gotten a copy of the birth certificate for yourself. I don't know what the law is like in Maryland, yeah. but in New York, you fill it out and it asks you, do you want an additional copy? And you check yes or whatever so, else. So, so but here's, here's, here's the thing, they were together at the time. And by say, yeah, we were together at the time. So it was a little different and- yeah. And me and my I, baby mom were together at the time when I filled that shit out, and I asked for another copy too, because I know how the shit goes. So because I'm laughing, right? Because I, I, because you know, I'm the one who had the copies. Like we, we had everything. You know, we were together. Jeez, for for ten years, right? So like everything is here, and in my and I kept the house in the divorce. So like everything's in my house. So there's actually a point where. You know, my ex-wife got mad at me and she came looking for paperwork. And I was like, yo, I'm on the phone. I'll get you the paperwork in a second. And I was in another room on a call and I come down and she is like on my front lawn with my little, like one of my little carry safes looking for paperwork. <laughs> so right. I went through the same. So, so she, didn't, she, didn't, she didn't have her copies either. And so, rather than go so through, Listen, listen, I went through the same system. goddamn thing, right? Because mm -hmm. I had my paperwork and when we separated, I was over here and she was over there, you know, we're a block away from each other, right? Yeah. And, and I remember I let her up in here, so I'm gonna cut this part out, right? But I remember I let her up in here <laughs> back when I used to actually let her in the house. I don't let her in the fucking house no more, right? <laughs> but I let her in the fucking house, right? Um, and she was in there in the bath, giving him a bath, right? I'm saying I was trying to do the fucking you know, just because co parenting we, uh, in the same space thing, yeah. Just because we ain't together, the fucking shit you be fucking doing, Clark. I yeah, <laughs> Clark, I don't know how the heck well, you do. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get years ago. Let me tell you what put the kibosh on it. Let me <laughs> tell you what put the kibosh on it. So she's talking about how she couldn't wash his hair. Who's gonna wash his hair? So I go in there and wash his hair, and I come out and she's gone. <sighs> Two weeks later, I'm looking for his birth certificate. I couldn't find it. A no. month before that, she couldn't find his birth certificate and she asked me for a fucking copy. And I said, okay, I'll give you a copy soon or whatever the fuck else it is. And we never got around to it. Now my fucking copy is missing. Right. So and she, I said, where else did it go? She took it. Right, and she then, took it and she bounced. And then when I <laughs> told her, I can't find my birth of the birth certificate, you know what they say the difference between a crackhead and a dope fiend is? <laughs> what? Steal your money. A crackhead will steal your money and help you look for it. She tried. To get me. <laughs> Why is that true? <laughs> she tried to get me to fucking oh maybe look here, maybe look here. Oh, she had you had you looking. See. And yeah, she had me looking fucking, and I'm I couldn't find the shit. So then I, I said, well, give me a copy of yours. And she said, well, I got mine. So I said, well, where'd you get yours? Where'd you find yours, right? She said, well, I got mine. I said, well, give me a copy. Well, I need you to sign something saying you're gonna give it back. A thief is always worried about a fucking thief. thief right? Hold on, let, 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 let's, let's get back to this because I don't want to run long, right? All right, go ahead, go ahead. During the pregnancy, did you go to like, what do you call them, Clark? Oh, the Lamar's like, classes, like the breathing classes? Yeah, yeah, we did. I, I, I attended every one. I was there. We were at our most happiest when she was pregnant. And Nothing. you said that you didn't want to get the courts involved, but you was talking to, I'm saying Vicky, about uh, what with respect to health care? putting um, your daughter on your health care or something like that? What were you um, Through my job's health care, because I know they provide it. And I don't know how or how good the state's um, health care is. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is good if it's covered by the state. But I want to be able, I guess, control that and not have the state have so much influence on my child. So okay, because I, I know David wants to wrap this up. I have another question about you and, and your, your daughter's mom, because you, you, it sounds like you said you were trying to show her that you're still in it. Yeah. Right? So are you looking to reconcile with her? Or are you guys just looking to co-parent at this point? Like I would still want to find happiness for the whole family because I know a happy and healthy family will breed the best results for a baby. Yeah, but it's got to be happy and healthy if y'all in there going at each other's throats every day and, you know. You're right. That's what I'm saying. If we can get to that point, that would be like the... I guess optimum and best result, but if we can't, but if we can't, then I I would love to at least co-parent. Have you guys 
done counseling or therapy or or you guys just trying to sort this out on your own for the most part? We've been trying to, but the last time I tried to get her to listen to my point of view, she just completely shut me out. And that's just been the cycle that we both have been in. Uh, Tariq, let me ask you. So is she getting public assistance? We, um, yes. So here's my concern, and I'm not an expert at this, right? Mm-hmm. But here's my concern. I would hate for her to be going to public assistance saying that you're not contributing anything to take care of your child. And then public assistance turns around and comes after you and starts to hit you up saying, well, we've been taking care of your child for all of this time. So now you have to give us back all the money that we paid up until this point. Does this sound familiar, Clark? Does this sound like this? Yeah, it absolutely does. It's a story it absolutely in your life. So, you know, you need to really uh, keep track of, and again, this is just me talking, you know, from what I know and from what I've read in, you know, the case law that I have studied. Thanks for the tip about when she's with me. But this right here has most of my receipts for groceries, toys, for everything regarding that I buy. Absolutely. Listen, if it were me, I got to be honest and say I'd be going over there to public assistance to tell them who I am and tell them this is what I'm doing and tell them that uh, I don't know what she's telling you. Listen, don't get me started. Don't get don't don't get me. And, and so and you're, you're absolutely going to get two different lenses because like yeah. I didn't go through it. Like I, it, it was I didn't go, yeah, I didn't go through it either. But what I'm trying to say is, yeah. you know, you don't. We, we, we've spoken to enough people who have gone through. It. You don't want them to come knocking on your door a year from now saying you owe us three years of uh, whatever they're giving us. Three, let's just say they're giving us three hundred dollars a month. You owe us uh, three thirty six nine thousand ten thousand dollars because that's what we've spent out on your child over the past three years. That's number one. Number two, um, you know. If you are the wage earner and y'all basically keeping the child an equal amount of time, you said you got it three days a week mm-hmm. and she has her about three days a week. So that's yeah. near what they call an equal amount of time. That's near like a 50, 50 split. Okay. Then you have the right under this, the law to write the child off on your taxes as the wage earner. That's the federal law. There's no way around that. So, All right. So wh- where can people find you? On Instagram. All right. So we'll- Tank.csr. Give it to Instagram again. Tank.csm. Unders- sorry, underscore tank.csm. One more time. Tank underscore dot csr. Tank. Tariq, we appreciate you. Thank you. No, okay. I appreciate you. All right. Stay in touch, bro. Thank All you, right. guys. You All guys right. stay safe. Okay, Thank be good. You too, brother. Huh. Yo, to be young. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yo. And and can you just oh, imagine like the, the pressure he could be under, no place really to stay and moving from place to place to place and yet still hanging in there and, and keep maintaining the relationship, I mean, with his with his child. That makes some of these grown up motherfuckers, you know, look like fucking Yeah, I mean, so like that's the crazy thing to me, right? Like cause I'm like as he's sharing his story, I'm thinking back and I'm like, yo, when my first daughter arrived, I was twenty five years old. I was still living with my parents. Yeah, I'd been in the workforce for a little bit, but I'm I was still trying to figure it out. You know, so to be 21, like I I I, I can feel it. I like the pressure on my shoulders as he's as he's telling the story. Did I tell you that my girlfriend when I was 19 years old was pregnant? No. Yeah, when I was 19 years old, first of all, I was a dick, right? <laughs> <laughs> my- it's, not far, it's not far from where <laughs> it's not well, far from where he is now, but I was a dick. I was a dick and uh, I got my girlfriend pregnant at the time. I was 19. She was still in high school. Jesus. Just about to graduate. When I told my mother and my brother, my brother was, he can't have no baby. What are you kidding, mom? My mother was like, no, maybe he'll start acting like a fucking adult. You should make him have that fucking baby. And I started acting like, dude, if I had a baby at 19, I would have been a fucking mess, even more than I, you know, I was a fucking mess. And, and her mother couldn't stand me. You know, her family couldn't stand me. Um, I was a mess. Thank God I did not. What happens is, you, as a, being a father that young, particularly, you know, if you are going through the self-centered, arrogant phase of, of being a young man, you present horribly to the people around you. Yes. And so they are absolutely worried for this young lady who is carrying your child. Yeah, because they're looking at you as the future, the, the thief of the future, you know, and the person 
who has turned this young lady's life upside down and in disarray because now she has somebody that she's permanently attached to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I would go true. as far as turn this lady's life upside but, down. But, uh, but I'm saying that that's the fear. That's the fear in their head. Yeah, yeah. Because because they're looking at you going, yo, this kid's a dick, right? And I, and I, and I, I look at my ex-wife and I know that there are people in her family and in her in her friend group and so forth who are like, yo, this guy, like, the fuck? He's not making any money. He's like, you know, he's like living in his mom's house at 25. I mean, granted, 25 wasn't that horrible, but like, whatever their reasoning. No, oh, I didn't have a driver's license, uh, you know, when my kid was born. All the number of things. It's, it's all varying degrees, right? But you absolutely, like, I, I'm looking at him, I'm like, yo, this, this dude, like, even the way he talks and, and he, the way he self actualizes, I'm like, yo, this kid has potential. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what I was trying to say is that there are some people who just would not be okay with that, right? right. He's probably not like, I'm, I'm sorry to use this word, but he's probably not an ass kisser. And there are some people who could live in those houses and just be ass kissers simply because right. it allows them to keep a roof over their head. And he's probably not a fucking ass kisser. And, you know, he bumps heads with these people and they be like, well, they're fucked. You don't like it? Get the fuck out of my house, right? right. And right. that could definitely, it, it, it doesn't make him a bad person, doesn't make them a bad person. That could just be what they need, right? Right. You know, and it could be just what, it, I think that this kid is going to find his own way. He's going to, you know, uh, keep doing things. He's going to progress. He'll get out. He'll get his own space. She'll be back. All right. Car, call action. We're going to get the fuck out of here. Yo, ladies, gentlemen, and consenting adults, Thank you for rocking with us again for another episode of Single Dad Why You Mad podcast. We love uh, what's you. today's date, Clark? We back. We was on hiatus, but we back. Yo, we're so happy to be back. Thank you for your patiently waiting, anticipating. You know, follow us wherever you get podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on SoundCloud. We everywhere. Uh, follow our, our Instagram. Check out our YouTube. We got a couple things up there. Anything you want to add, David? Single dad, why you mad? Single dad, why you mad? Single dad, why you mad? Single dad, why are you mad? Single dad, why 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 you mad?